Yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time of the hour when you're watching this uh, program. My name is Ben Fetcher and I'm here uh, for the Behold in Christ show, the one of the shows that I really enjoy where we talk about Christ and uh, just like the name suggests, it's Beholding Christ. That is to say that uh, our main focus is to show us Christ, is to point men to Christ, is to point everyone who cares to Christ. And uh, as the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 18, that as we behold in a mirror, so when we look unto Jesus, when we behold him, we are transformed, we are metamorphosed, we are transformed, we are changed into the same image. Why? Because when we look unto him, we see ourselves and we see the reality of our spirits. So it is not our spirits that are transformed. It is our souls, our minds that are transformed and our lives is transformed as a result of the renewing of the mind. As Paul says in the book of Romans, uh, Romans chapter 12 from verse 2, that do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So in the spirit when we received Christ Jesus, we received the fullness of life, we received everything that pertains to life and godliness and in the spirit we are as perfect as Christ is. We have received the perfection of Christ. But when the word comes to us, the word of Christ uh, the word of the gospel when we hear the word it is our souls, that is our minds that are renewed, that our trans are, are changed so that we can start thinking like we are according to the word of God. And uh, when our minds are renewed, uh, what happens is that we are transformed. Our lives are transformed. Uh, if we were sick, we start enjoying uh, wholeness. If we were walking in sin, we start enjoying liberation, start walking in righteousness. And uh, that is the focus of our program. And I want us to pray so that we can uh, get into the word. Father, we thank you for revelation. It uh, will flow freely this hour as we take uh, this few minutes into your word. I thank you for my viewers tonight. I call them blessed because in Christ Jesus they are blessed. In Jesus' name we pray and we give thanks. Amen and amen. So today I want to start another series about uh, manifesting sonship, manifesting sonship. And uh, I want to begin by saying that most of us, we know and we are established, especially if you've been a follower of our programs, you've been your, uh, if you've been following our teachings here on Beholding Christ, you have been established in this, the finished works of Christ. You've been established in the finished work of Christ. And what is the finished work of Christ? The finished work of Christ is what Christ has accomplished through the death, the burial, and the resurrection, what he has finished. And you know, the Bible says that when he was crucified, and uh, on the ninth hour, he, before he gave up the ghost, he, de uh, he declared that it is finished. Then he died. So there is uh, an understanding that has been uh, going on through our episodes, through our teachings here and at Beholding Christ. And we have emphasized on what Christ has done. And because of his death, his burial, and his resurrection, there are things that are already settled and they are accomplished. Things to do with the forgiveness of sins, things to do with uh, sonship, things to do with uh, uh, redemption, things to do with blessing. All of those things have been established in Christ Jesus. But now, uh, because we have been established in the finished works of Christ, there, has, there is now the ongoing or the present work of the Spirit of God in us. So before we, uh, we, uh, we move on to this ongoing work or the present work of the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God in us, we must have been established in the finished works of Christ. And now what is the, the ongoing or what is the present work of the Spirit in us. It is the working of God in us that produces and that causes us to walk in the manifestation of the realities of the finished works. You can only manifest what you have been made. 
Praise be to God. So as we talk about manifesting sonship, you must first be established in this, that you have been made a son. You cannot manifest sonship. To manifest means to bring out. Manifest means to, to bring into, into reality. Uh, the realities that are inside to be seen even on the outside. Praise God. Now, be, before they are seen on the outside, they are first established on the inside. And I want us to go to one very, very common part of the Bible uh, that is in the book of Philippians chapter 2 from verse 12. And this is Paul speaking to the church at Philippi. And the Bible says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to do of his good Pleasure says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So when I talk about manifesting sonship, this is what I mean, working out the sonship that is already established in you in Christ Jesus. So he says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Then verse 13 says, for it is God who works in us. So the working out is a result of the working in of God. He says, for it is God who works in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So when we talk of manifesting sonship, we are talking about working out. We are talking about the ability or the the Lord enabling us to do and to will and to manifest his good pleasure and to work out his will, to work out his, uh, his word in the name of Jesus Christ. So uh, let, me, let, me put this, let me put it this way. The finished works of Christ is for us and the present work of Christ or of the Spirit is in us. Listen to what he says, for it is God who works in us both to do and to will according to his good pleasure. Praise God. So the finished works of Christ is established for us. It's what God through Christ has done for you and I. So that is the finished works of Christ. But now the ongoing work is what is happening right now. Hallelujah. And it is happening as a result of what has been finished. So the Lord is presently working in us to help us to manifest the finished works of the cross in our daily lives. So that though, uh, though Christ has finished all the works, now it is our responsibility, it is our duty to manifest that work in our day-to-day -day life. It is our duty to manifest uh, to manifest forgiveness, to manifest uh, righteousness, to manifest love, to manifest joy, because all these things have been worked by God and uh, they have been worked for us. Now, when he is working in us, he is enabling us to manifest it now, even in the physical realm. So what God or what Christ worked for us established us in the spirit. But now what God is working in us establishes us in the soul and in the body. Did you hear that? I said, what God worked for us at the cross, established the realities of our spirit. And that is final, final, final. Remember, man is a spirit, he has a soul, and he lives in the body. Man is a spirit, he has a soul, and he lives in the body. When we got born again, it's the spirit part of us that got born again and received the fullness of God, received the finality of Christ, received the perfection of Christ in our spirits, but in our souls and our bodies. And when I say soul, this is the realm where we have our emotions, this is where we have our minds, this is where uh, we have... Uh, our thinking and, and all that, even the realm of, uh, of education. This is where we are educated, you know. This is where we have goodwill and all that. And, you know, so in the, in that realm, when we got born again, nothing changed per se. So if you are a person full of wrath, 
if you used to get angry very uh, quickly, if you are high t or, or hot tempered, you remained to be hot tempered the day you got born again because it did not change your mind, it did not change your body, it only changed your spirit and your spirit became exactly like God. So the finished works of Christ, which he worked for us, established our spirit. But now when the Bible says, for it a uh, work out. Now the working out is to work out what is already in us in the spirit. And now when the Bible says that for it is God who works in us. Now this working of God is what is happening through the word to enable us now uh, to have our minds renewed. We were thinking in a certain way. We used to be hot tempered. We used to get angry. We used to be, uh, to be very bitter with people. We used to harbor unforgiveness. But now as God is working in us through his word, now all these things uh, begin to change one by one, one by one. They begin to change. And ultimately, on the outside now, the life of Christ that is in our spirit begins to manifest. Hallelujah. So, uh, now it is God uh, presently, wa presently working in us to help us to manifest the finished works of the cross in our daily lives. He is working in us the willingness and the ability to manifest what his finished works here on earth is praise God. There is a place in the book of Romans chapter 7 where Paul says, to will is present, but to do, uh, uh, what I will, pre I will to do is present, but the ability to do it is not there. I, in my heart, I would like to do this, but I don't have the ability to do it. But now when we come to the working of God in us, he is the one who gives us the willingness and the ability. You know, in the Old Testament, they had the willingness to do good, but they didn't have the ability to do good. But with the coming of Christ now, God works in us both the willingness and the ability. For it is him that works in us both to do, both to will and to do. So when we talk about the ongoing or the present work of Christ in us, is him working the willingness and the ability. That is why Paul says in another place, I can do all things. Why? Though I didn't have the ability to do it before because of the law, but now because I have Christ and, the, and, and God is working in me, I not, not only have the willingness, but I also have the ability. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, who is at work in me. Hallelujah. So even for you, maybe you've been struggling with some things in your life, though we keep telling you that you are the righteousness of God because of what Christ has done, your sins are forgiven and God will not condemn you, he will not judge you, but deep within your heart there is, uh, there is something that you're struggling to do. Now, this is the process of the ongoing work of God, the ongoing work of the Spirit in us, where he is working in us, the ability and the willingness to do according to his good pleasure. Praise be to God. And as we can see in, in those verses 12 and 13, we work out what he is working in us. The Bible does not say work for your own salvation. The Bible says work out your salvation. So we are not working for it. The part of working for salvation is not man's. It is God's part. We don't work for salvation. It is God who worked for salvation. We work out salvation. So who worked in, uh, who, is, uh, who is the source of salvation? Is God who worked for salvation more than 2,000 years ago. And what did we do? We believed. So when we believe, we don't work for salvation. There is no single thing that you can work to be saved, that you can do to be in good books with God. We don't work for it. It is a free gift. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, uh, for it is by grace that we are saved through faith, lest any man should boast. So salvation is not anywhere near the working of man. So we are not told work for your salvation with fear and trembling. He says work out and you can only work out that which has been worked in. Praise be to God. So he has finished the work of our redemption. 
That is the finished work. He has finished the work of forgiveness. That is finished. By the way, the issue of forgiveness has been dealt with because there are still so many people who are struggling to, to know whether, uh, struggling to settle with the issue of forgiveness because they feel like, I still need to do something for God to forgive me. I still need to confess my sins. I still need to educate God about my sins. You know, sometimes we feel like... Uh, you want to tell God, I did this and this and this. And you know what you're trying to do is to try to educate God about your, your, your sins. Yet he knows you better than you know yourself. And that is why he offered a perfect sacrifice, a perfect, permanent, eternal solution for your sins. So the issue of forgiveness is also a done deal. We are not working to be forgiven. It has been worked for. He has finished our perfection. Our victory has been finished. That is the finished work. But he is working in us their willingness and ability to will and to do, to apply the finished works onto our lives. Praise God. So what is happening now, after we are settled in what he has done, it is the working in us to enable us to apply what has been finished, to enable us to apply the righteousness that has been finished, to enable us to apply the perfection that has been finished, to enable us to apply the love that has been finished because it is a done, done deal. Praise God. So we already, we are already exactly as Christ is now. First John chapter 4 verse 17 says that that, uh, but be that as Christ is, as he is, so are we right now. Where? In our spirits. As he is, so are we. Praise God. So we are already exactly as he is. We are already, uh, we already have eternal life right now. But we need to manifest who we are in the body of Christ. Praise God. So, Settling in what is finished is not enough, my brother and my sister. We need to see it manifesting in your day-to-day -day life. Praise be to God. We need to see that righteousness. Now, this is where the Apostle James comes in. You know, Paul talks about it is by grace through faith and we cannot do anything about it. And it is not of works. Then James comes in and says, uh, faith without works is dead. We need to accompany faith with works. But these people are not... Uh, opposing each other but and they are not contradicting each other but they are talking about two different things the first one who is paul is establishing men in the justification before god and he says for you to be justified before god you don't need to do any works you just need to believe then apostle james comes in and he's talking about justification before men that is why if you read carefully he says if i come to your house and i need your help maybe i don't have food i need food and you tell me to go in peace before me, you're not justified. You may be justified before God because you believed in Christ and you are as righteous as Christ is. But in my eyes, you're not justified. Why? You're not justified. Why? Because I know you have food. Instead of telling me to go in peace, you are supposed to give me food. And that is the only way you could be justified before my eyes. So before the eyes of men, faith is not enough. They need to see your works. And now this is what we are talking about. Working out your own salvation. Working out the life of God that is in you. Working out the ability of God that is in you. Praise be to God. So we need to manifest who we are here in the body. And that is, uh, that is what the whole world is waiting for. And uh, that is what... Uh, we will go to that in the book of Romans chapter chapter 8 where the Bible talks about the whole world, all creation, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Who is kind of sons of God? The sons who have already been established in sonship through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. And those now who have acknowledged the present working of God in them through the Holy Spirit. And now they are ready by the enabling power of the Holy Spirit to manifest these realities. Hallelujah. And uh, that, uh, there is something I would like you to note that he is not working to make us like Christ. So the ongoing or the present work of the Holy Spirit in us is not to make us like Christ. Ha, praise God. Because it is the finished works that made us like Christ, not the present work. 
Hallelujah. It is not the present work, it is the finished work. So we already are like Christ. Praise God. He is not again trying to make us holy, righteous, or perfect. So the working of the Holy Spirit in us today, the present work, is not to make us holy, righteous, and uh, perfect. No. Why? Because through the death of Jesus Christ, we were presented before God as holy and righteous and blameless before God. Hallelujah. And that is how now we are established in that reality. The other thing I would like you to know is that he is not trying to sanctify us. He already did because Christ has become unto us. Uh, wisdom, sanctification, righteousness, you know, that is uh, in Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. He has become all this. So we are not uh, the, the working of the Holy Spirit, the present work of Christ in us, that is by the Holy Spirit, is not to sanctify us. No, 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 no. We have been sanctified by the word. Praise God. We are settled in Christ. Hallelujah. It is now to bring us to the awareness of the sanctification that is in the spirit so that we can walk like it however he wants our minds to be renewed to those uh, to, to be renewed to those realities so that we can leave them out here here on earth god wants us to leave out righteousness he wants us to leave out holiness he wants us to leave out perfection he wants us to leave out divine wholeness and all that and uh, uh, that is the work he is presently doing in us to enable us to live out all those realities. Look at Second Corinthians five seventeen. A very common verse says, "If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new." And now the ongoing work of Christ is to enable us to manifest this newness of life. Again, you will see it in the book of Romans chapter six. We have been called into the newness of life this newness of life is not just by faith it's not just by uh, it's not just by in the spirit we need to see it manifesting on the outside and the only way that happens is when we allow uh, the when we yield to the working of the spirit in us so this is not a call to change to become a new creation we are not being called to become a new creation we already are it is a call to believe that you already are a new creation in christ hallelujah so we don't grow to become anything we grow to manifest who we have become in christ we don't grow to become anything we grow to manifest who we've become. We don't grow to become righteous. We don't grow to become perfected. We don't grow to become holy. We don't grow to become anything. We grow to manifest. Understand those two things. Because what we were supposed to become, we have already become. Hallelujah. God cannot tell you to work out what he has not made you. It's uh, a good example. You cannot tell uh, uh, an animal to bark if it's not a dog. First, it is, it is born as a dog, or it, it is made as a dog, then it is natural for it to bark. So before our doing, before we do anything in this present world, before we do or say anything, first God establish us, establishes us in our being. So being comes before doing. Did you hear that? Being comes before doing. So he makes you first, then he calls you to manifest that what he has made you. And that is why sometimes I get angry even with some systems of uh, uh, some education systems that we have in the world. For example, we hear things like, what would you like to become when you grow up? That is a wrong way of training people. It is not what they should uh, they want to become. It is who they are that should be nurtured until they manifest it completely. Praise be to God. So there are some systems that are wrong and that is why we have so many failures in life because they are always looking forward on what they want to become. You know, some of them say that they, they want to become doctors and they ended up being patients. Others say they wanted to become engineers. They ended up being failures because they are trying to look for something to become. But the reality is there is that which you are made and you be, you are made to be uh, to become. And actually you you are made so that you can manifest it. You don't grow into becoming something new. You grow into manifesting who you are in Christ. 
So as we conclude our our episode today, I want to say so we we are supposed to believe who Christ has made us to be in him and we walk in it. We manifest it by the word being allowed to renew our minds. The whole, the whole world is not waiting for the manif- uh, for the behaving of the sons of God. It is waiting for the manifestation. Neither is it waiting for the manifestation or, or for the becoming of the sons of God. It is waiting for the manifestation. It, the world is not waiting for you to become a son because you have already been made a son in Christ. It is waiting for you to manifest so that you can help the world to come into order in Jesus' mighty name. So in our next episode, we look at Romans chapter 8 verse 19 where the Bible talks about how creation is eagerly waiting for the manifestation of sons. So thank you for being with me in this episode. This has been the Beholding Christ and we've been talking about manifesting sonship and I know this is a wonderful discussion. This is a wonderful uh, series. Don't miss this. And uh, I call you blessed in Christ Jesus. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you that you love us this much. Thank you that uh, you care for us. Thank you that you have made us sons so that now, because of the working of the Spirit of God in us, we are working out what is worked in. So we have the ability both to will and to do according to your good pleasure. The righteousness that has been worked in, we work it out and we manifest it in our daily lives. And we become a blessing to the world around us. I thank you for my viewers. In Jesus' name, we pray and we give thanks. Amen and amen. So thank you for being with us. Bye-bye. See you in our next episode. Amen.